<sighs> Sean, this isn't you. Look at me. Look at me, Sean. We know you and that chicken have a special bond. Oh, wait. That, I did not mean for that to come out of my mouth. What a lot of people to the internet, my name is Kevin and welcome back to another video. Okay guys, so for today's video, I wanted to read a book, which actually probably from the title of this video, you're like, why would you want to read that? The question really is, why do I want to read that? And the answer is because I started this book and during like this whole few months that I've been gone from YouTube, I started so many books and I finished like barely any of them. So I just kind of want to go back and try finish some of the ones that I started. Now this is one that I started and I was just like struggling to get through because it was just bad and laughably bad. But I remember I was talking to Chloe about it and I was telling her like stuff that happens in the book and she was like, Kevin, that would make for a really fun video because it sounds so bizarre. And I was like, you know what? Maybe I will do that. So that's what I am going to be doing. We'll talk about this book more in a minute and just be prepared for the wildness that's in it because literally the, one of the main characters in this is a chicken. A chicken. However, let's do a little segue off of that because that's a bad book, but if you're looking for some good books, the place to go to to find some amazing new books to read is today's sponsor, which is Book of the Month. Thank you so, so much to Book of the Month once again for working with me on another video. I absolutely adore working with Book of the Month. They're one of my favorite companies and book subscription services. I love them so, so much. And if you don't already know, Book of the Month is an ever-growing, fast online book subscription service. Their mission is to find new and upcoming authors and to help readers find the next great book that they're gonna read. And how it works is the Book of the Month team goes through hundreds and hundreds of books every single month and they curate a list of about six books which their subscribers and readers can choose one book each month as their Book of the Month. And by them doing this, it's saves you readers and me less time researching for books and more time actually doing the reading. One of my favorite things about Book of the Month is that it is completely risk-free, meaning that if there is a month that you don't want to be a part of Book of the Month, you can easily skip it and you will not be charged. And I just think that's an amazing feature that they offer. These are the seven books that were selected this month by Book of the Month. And like, just look at the color of all those spines. Like, wow. Honestly, the power of literature. Literally, it's just so stunning. And in particular, three out of those seven really appeal to me. So of course we have got this month's romance pick, which is by Abby Jimenez and it's called Power of Your World. And it just looks so cute. Look at the little baby go on the cover. Sorry, I just love the little baby go. So of course I've got the lovely Book of the Month logo on the cover and on the spine. And I just, I'm so excited to read this. I love romance. And I'm planning to do a romance readathon this month. So might read that for that. Then one of the other ones that I'm really excited about, and I think a lot of us are excited about, is Book of the Night by Holly Black which is Holly Black's debut adult fantasy novel. Obviously, if you know Holly Black, she's written The Wicked King, The Cruel Prince, and all that series, which I did really, really enjoy. But this is her debut adult fantasy book, so I'm very excited for this one. And then the other one, which I actually am really intrigued by, is called Darling Girl by Liz Mikalski. And this is basically a Peter Pan retelling, except Peter Pan is not a good boy who just like doesn't want to grow up. He's actually like someone who kidnaps children. I've never read a retelling like that and I'm honestly so excited about it. And this is one I literally would never have known about if it wasn't for Book of the Month. So once again, they have literally stuck to their goal by reducing time for me to research and now I just have more time to actually read it. Now currently Book of the Month is only shipping to US addresses. So if you are able to get it, I would highly recommend that you do so. It's a place to get really affordable, brand new hardcover fiction books. So I would highly recommend it. And I'm very much aware that my main demographic on my YouTube channel is people from America. So if you haven't already checked out Book of the Month, you can click the link in my description to go sign up to Book of the Month and use the code GOMAY to get your first book for $9.99, which is such an amazing price, especially, as I said, for brand new hardback books. And just thank you so, so much to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. So now we go back to You're So Dead by Ash Parsons. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna move to my sitting room because I'm ready to start reading it and I'll recap you on everything that's happened so far in the book and just prepare yourself. Okay, so we're sitting on the ground. Let's give you a recap of what's been going on so far in this book. To set the picture, imagine Coachella on an island in the Caribbean.
Okay, that's what we're all picturing. There's 12 different influencers there. I cannot remember all of their names, but I will try to give you an idea. So we've obviously got the main character named Plum and her two friends who, the three of them together, not influencers. They are liars, they are deceitful, they are phonies. I have never said that word in true context before and I don't know how I like me saying it, but we're going with it. They're basically there because Plum's sister is actually an influencer and she got invited to the festival but she didn't go and so her sister was like, I'm gonna pretend to be her and I'm gonna go. So that's what she's doing and she brought along her two friends, that's why they're all at the festival. Then we've got a couple of other ones. One of them has already died. Fun fact, it's the one that, who did die? I think it's the, the one who died. <laughs> uh... So the one who has currently died, she choked on these poisoned flowers that were in a cup or something. Like she got poisoned basically at the party. She didn't get like murdered or anything. She just literally drank, got poisoned, died. And her name was Britlin. And I think that she was well known for being very controversial. Like she's not a good person. She just has every disgusting opinion you can think of. That was her and she's famous for it. We also have an influencer called Dude. His name is Dude. And he is famous for saying, Hey Dude. Yes, I said that correctly. So he like pops out at people and he goes, Hey Dude, and like films them for something. And that's how he became famous. Yep. His name is Dude, and he says, hey, dude, and that's why he's famous. Yeah. It gets worse. It gets worse. Because there is another ca character, I cannot remember his name, but he, I think he's British. And he is famous for rescuing a chicken. <laughs> Saying it out loud, I'm just realizing how <laughs> bizarre this whole book is. Like, yeah, he's well known and a famous influencer because he saved the chicken. So there was this chicken apparently in the ocean or something like that got brought out and it was gonna drown and then he saved the chicken. Someone filmed it, obviously it put online and then he became famous. So that's how he's become this huge influencer because he's like a hero for saving a chicken. But in reality, like we found out when he meets the whole group on this island that he actually hates chickens and the chicken has died already and every time he just gets another chicken to replace the chicken so everyone thinks it's the same chicken. I need to find out what the name of the chicken was because it does have a name and like everyone's obsessed with this chicken. I think the guy who saved the chicken, his name is Sean. The chicken is called Henrietta. Henrietta the chicken. So his name is Sean, but his Instagram handle and what he's famous for is called Chick Space Magnet. Because obviously he saved a chicken, so now he's the chicken magnet. <laughs> This book is so stupid. Then there is these two other girls. One is famous for being like a makeup artist. So, okay, fun, nothing wrong with that. That's very common influencer right there. Then another one is famous for like astrology. So she does like astrology readings and stuff like that. Once again, very common thing. These are both very common influencers. Then another guy is an influencer because he does like a true crime podcast. There is another guy who is a Twitch streamer. But anyways, I can't remember every character because it's been a while since I was reading this. But the main ones that you need to remember is the guy who's famous for saying, hey dude, and like whipping his camera out and like pranking people. And then the other one for saving a chicken. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 I didn't tell you the best part. The other best part. So this island, obviously they've been abandoned. They got summoned to this island for a festival. The festival's not real, spoiler alert. Like it does not exist. And I assume like they're all just been brought here to be murdered. Like that's what's going to happen. And like I said, there's no signal, no Wi-Fi, none of these different things. The only thing they're able to access is the app for the festival on their phones. That's the only thing they can go onto because they were brought to create content for it. But saying all of this, like I said, no, I don't think there's electricity. Is there electricity? I don't think there is. So yeah, saying all of that, there is also like this R2-D2 type robot <laughs> that's in the house called Wadsworth. And he kind of just relays messages through an intercom. And he's like speaking about like, oh, welcome to Pyre Festival. You need to do this and all this different stuff. And 
it's literally R2-D2 because he just, the way he speaks and everything, it just doesn't make any sense. And now when, since Britain, the very first person has died, he is now suddenly like not talking to them and not answering them. So like, ooh, scary, suspicious, like R2-D2 is actually evil. Now also, when Britain died, so as I said, she got poisoned. I hope we're all up to speed about what's been going on. She died with like a note in her mouth from... So, this just makes no sense actually. So she drank something that had flower petals in it. She poisoned herself and then suddenly has a note in her mouth which they didn't notice when they tried to do CPR on her to save her and now suddenly there's a note... <laughs> Anyways, they read the note because they're like, oh my god, someone needs to read it. So they do. Two dramatic sequence. Britain wanted to be the woman of the hour. Instead, she was choked by those delicate flowers. Aiming to have absolute influence, she became the most toxic effluent. Will you be next? Look around. Guess. Who's the killer? Will they confess? And where was the poison? The flower? That's rich. Perhaps it was always inside this horrible excuse for a person. <laughs> It's just, I can't take it seriously. And I'm so sorry to this book, like, good for you, I guess, but also not good for you. And I'm just gonna go continue it. I think where I last left off, they went running out of the house because they were freaked out, obviously, because the person died. And they heard, like, a really weird scream and they thought it was someone else getting, like, attacked or something. But it turned out to be a goat in a bush. Which, in hindsight, I don't think is a good omen. Seeing a goat after someone has died, don't think that's a good idea. Okay guys, so I'm up to chapter 14 now on page 159. Almost halfway, we still only have one person dead. And I thought that there was 12 people, but maybe there was only 11, because I've just gotten all the names again, and I've counted them all, and that's only 10 people. So, and then one person's dead, so that's 11. So I think there might have only been 11 people, not 12, so I do apologize. But let's get a recount of everyone's names, shall we? So, we have got Plum, the main character, then her two friends, Sophia and Marlo. Sophia is known for being a vegetarian, I think, or vegan. That's her personality trait in this whole book. Marlo's other personality trait is that she's a huge movie fanatic and she is just supposed to know everything about like solving crimes because she's watched so many movies. <laughs> That's her personality trait. Then we've also got, as I already said, the guy who saved the chicken, AKA Sean. We have Dude, AKA the guy who says, hey dude, and just films it and goes viral. Then we have the guy, a guy named Jude, which I am not sure what he does. So he's with Dude and Sean because they're all splitting up into groups to go search the island to make sure there's no one else on the island. Then we have the other three. So we have Cece, which is the makeup artist. Then we have Jalen, which is the true crime podcaster guy. And then we've got Shelly, which is the girl who does the ash astrology readings and stuff. Then the other person that we have is called Warrix, and he is the Twitch streamer. Also, Henrietta needs her own little moment. If the chicken gets hurt in this story, I will be devastated. That's the only character I care about in this whole story right now is Henrietta. Do not let anything happen to her or it will be on site and I will be upset. And then also, the reason why like I say that this book is just laughable and just not great is because there are moments at the end of the chapter where I think we're trying to create suspense. We're trying to be like, <gasps> or to like get us going, oh my God, my heart is beating so fast, it's going pizza pata, that kind of thing. But it just doesn't work. Like it just doesn't work. For example, as I said, they're all splitting up the groups to go search the island. And then this is how the chapter ends. Okay, check the time, meet back in the conservatory in an hour, stay safe. Stay together, Marlowe said. We will be safe, Jalen promised into his phone, unless the killer has other plans. <laughs> That's not really working the way I think it's meant to because that made me laugh, that made me giggle. You know what I mean? Okay, so now 
They've searched the island, they've found no one. Shocker, like we all knew that was not gonna happen. They are now accusing Sean, AKA chicken influencer, that he is the killer because Shelly, who is the astrology influencer, is saying that animal cruelty shall these boys cracked on the second word. All the serial killers start with animals. Cece spun so fast her ponytail swung out in a high arc. Exactly how many Henriettes have there been again? Sean shook his head. There's a big difference between a chicken and a person. Ducks. See, you even call us ducks, Shelley said. You're not making any sense, Sean hissed. Don't tell me what I'm doing, Shelley hissed back. Her hazel eyes flashed. Dudes, dude said in a conciliatory tone. That is a weird word. What does that mean? His narrowed eyes still circled the group warily. He held out his hands. Yeah, Jude agreed. Let's not fight. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it's the whole. <sighs> Sean, this isn't you. Look at me. Look at me, Sean. We know you and that chicken have a special bond. Oh, wait. That, I did not mean for that to come out of my mouth. <laughs> oh, I'm losing my mind. I'm losing my mind. But anyways, yeah, like it's literally the, look at me, this isn't you moment happening right now. What is this book? This is a legit sentence from the book. Dude, dude said gently for them all. I mean, I don't know, dude. I'm really, really, really trying to take this as seriously as I possibly can. But there's only so much chicken talk that you can take, you know what I mean? So they're all having this like kumbaya moment, sitting in the living room area because they think it's best to stay all together and safety in numbers. Obviously basic standard horror movie survival tactic. They're just having like this conversation about trying to see if maybe there's something that connects them all and like, do they have anything in common and like why they would all be brought here because there was only nine invites. That means the killer obviously only wanted those specific nine people to be at it. So, you know, they're trying to see is there a connection that they all have together. And so they've gone through, they're like, okay, Sean has obviously animal rights activists very annoyed with him because they're worried about the chicken. Then they have Dude who obviously pranks people and films people out their consent. That's obviously an issue. Then the guy who does the true crime podcast, people think he's profiting off other people's trauma. And so they're just trying to figure out all these different things that people, they have in common that would make someone mad and want to get them. So they're doing all of that. And then they go to Plum. So why are you here? And then she just has like her big moment, like her really big moment. And I am going to do my best at acting that out for you guys. So just remember, Plum is the sister of this girl named Peach. Yes, her name is, her older sister is called Peach and she's called Plum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so basically this, the older sister Peach is the one that is the influencer. Plum went as obviously taking her invites. So she's not actually an influencer and that's what you need to know. And now, oh, I just cracked the spine. That's how you know that I don't really care about this book. A Dramatic Reading by Irish Reader. I'm here, we're here, because I wanted to do something fun. I wanted to be important, like my sister Peach. I wanted to see what it felt like to be like her. If I'm being honest, I wanted to pretend to be her, you know, for a change. Marlo, what's wrong with the way you are? Jude, there's nothing more valuable than being yourself. Be authentic. That's what I always tell my fans. Thanks, Jude. And yeah, I know I'm supposed to be happy with who I am. It's just, it's hard when you feel like you're left out of everything and you go online and there's your sister. And I miss her too. She doesn't miss me though. Why would she? Sophia. Oh, Plum. I'm sure she misses you. Cece. Well, when she arrives, I bet it'll be tomorrow. You can talk it out with her. Shelly. Yeah, you can tell her how you feel. She's in Aries, right? Tomorrow's a good day to make a new start for Aries. And then we can all leave on the boat. Plum. I, I don't know. Jude. No, we've got your back. Plum. Um, thanks, but I don't know if, anyway. The point is my friends shouldn't be here. They don't deserve any of this. So, um, yeah, I guess 
pressuring them into coming with me is officially the worst thing I've ever done. Sophia, besides start a fight in eighth grade and get sent to the principal's office? Plum, nah, that doesn't count. I do that all over again. <laughs> like, how corny and cringe is all of that dialogue. And yes, my acting might be extremely cringe and corny, but that's the point. <laughs> that is the point. Like, I'm not even, am I halfway? I think I am, but like, I'm this far in, only one person has died. Get to it. Okay, everyone. Chicken boy has died. Pretty devastating actually. But Henriette is still fine. She's like sleeping away in like a little sanctuary place. Perfectly fine. She's literally thriving, living her best chicken life. But he was basically like talking to everyone and he was like drunk and then like fireworks kind of went off in the middle of the room. I, or maybe like firecrackers, like bangers in the room. Kind of went off and caused everyone to be distracted. There was a lot of smoke. And then when the smoke cleared, they saw that Sean was on the ground an arrow in his chest or a spear in his chest. He was gone. Chicken boy was gone. Once again, where the chicken Henrietta was sleeping, there was a note. They've read the note and it says, he traveled the world. He went round and then some. Just him and his girls, the chickens, a sick some. Listen up dummies. It's not about the birds. Just that this guy was the biggest of turds. You are all found guilty. Your sentence is death. And when, you're, and when you lie lifeless, only then will I rest. Was the influence worth it? Do you regret it one bit? Or are you like Sean, a complete piece of human waste? Nah, I won't rest. I'll keep killing some more. It's just so fun keeping the score. I'm sorry, but this is literally the most cringe writing I've ever ever read, I think. And I've read after. I have read after. Let's all remember that. Okay guys, so it's the next day. I couldn't read any more yesterday because you know, you get to a point, like obviously I said that I wanted to just have a laugh and read something funny because I just wanted to do that. It gets to a point where there's only so much badness you can read in one day. So I just decided to stop. I've been reading again this morning and now I'm up to page 252, which I'm very thankful for because I cannot wait to be finished. At this point, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm really hoping that this book is meant to be satirical or just meant to be satire because it's just so bad that the only way you can really excuse it is if that was the intention of the book. Like at the back of it, it says a deliciously dark, wickedly funny thriller to obsess over. Now I don't know about you, but I'm not laughing for good reasons. I'm laughing because it's bad. It's definitely not deliciously dark and it's definitely not thrilling at all. So I don't know how this is a thriller, but apparently it is. And like just the dialogue in here, it's just like, obviously I've already read parts out to you for the dialogue. Like. It's just so bad. The reason that I just think it has to be satire, like maybe, I don't, I don't really think it is, but I'm kind of hoping that it is, is because the way the author has written the dialogue of these influencers is honestly like the superficial stereotypes that you just see people think that the way influencers talk. And like, it's just so cringe to read because it's kind of like, is this because they're making fun of influencers in a satire way? Or is this genuinely how the author thinks they act and speak? Like, is that like really, like she thinks this is like amazing representation? Because no. Like where I am right now in the story, Plum's sister Peach, who is the one that is obviously the influencer and Plum took the ticket for, has just shown up to the festival. Like she just arrived. And they're all like, oh my god, you shouldn't have came. There's like a murder happening on here. They're saying to her, like, there's no Wi-Fi. Like, you won't be able to get anything, any, like, help. And the sister's just like, wait, there's no Wi-Fi? Like, she's ignoring the fact that people have died. And she's just like, wait, you're telling me there's no Wi-Fi. And, like, she says it multiple times. Like, there's no Wi-Fi. And that's why I feel like maybe that part is meant to be satire. Because 
Like, is it playing on like a stereotype that like influencers can't live without Wi-Fi, which they definitely can. I don't know. Like, I, I just really hope that's satire because if that was actually meant to be genuine, I, I will say though, we're getting kind of like a bisexual queen moment, I think. Because Plum is like attracted to Marlo, which is one of her best friends, and she has like a, a crush on her. And like, Marlo kind of just fell like a few minutes ago. And I say this is like as if this is something that just happened, like, oh, this just happened a few minutes ago. <laughs> but Marlo like fell and like Plum like had her hand on her back to try to get her up or anything and they had like a moment. So I'm kind of like, okay, let's have some female, female romance going on. Like we love to see it. The fact that I'm this much left and there's literally 10 of them now on the island alive. We need to pick up the pace. Okay guys, so I'm now up to page 276. We finally got another person dead. Also, Henrietta the chicken, I feel like has more of a personality than like any of these characters. I feel like she literally feels more three-dimensional as a character, the freaking chicken. <laughs> the chicken has more screen time and personality than any of these characters. But anyways, one of the characters, another one has died. So the guy who was the crime podcaster guy, Jalen, has died. Moment of silence for Jalen, moment is over. And yeah, he was basically stabbed in a fridge. Yep, stabbed in a fridge. What a way to go. And also there was like a smoke bomb that went off and caused all this ruckus and then he ran into a fridge to try to save himself and then he got stabbed in the fridge. <laughs> this book! And then of course he had a poem attached to him where the knife was protruding from his chest so we have to read his poem for his death. Jalen liked bloody ground. Well now it's all around. His podcast was yucky. It's true, he was sucky. Still, that's not why I killed him. I did it for the mocking that fulfilled him. Now you can't run or hide. It's time the next one died. I feel like these poems are something that a literal five-year-old would have wrote. Okay, so it turns out Jalen didn't die. He survived that stabbing because he sat up and he was like, oh my God, what just happened? So he's not dead. Warwick, AKA the Twitch streamer has just died because he got blown up inside of a house that was wired with explosives. And the chicken is still fine. The chicken is still fine. She was really close to the explosion. I thought we were about to have some fried chicken. That's not a funny joke, Kevin. We love Henrietta. Warwick's is dead and his poem because there's always a poem once one of these die. It's over for Warwick's now. Isn't that sad? No, not really. It isn't that bad. One minute here, now he's died in the night. But influencers all want to blow up. Am I right? Anyways, I'm on page 320. I have this much left and there's still eight people live? Nine? I think nine or eight, including the chicken. Henrietta the chicken will prevail through this story. She will be our final girl. Okay, literally two pages later, Shelly, AKA the astrology queen has now died as well. And she died by plugging her phone charger into the wall. And then like, I think the circuit or something overcharged or something, I don't know. And like she got electrocuted by charging her phone. So she's gone and her poem, cause once again, there's always a poem, is only two lines long. Our astrology queen did not even get enough lines. She didn't even get a stanza, she got two lines. But it basically just says, her poems and astrology were crap, but mockery is why she got zapped. Hey, okay, onward we go. Okay guys, I have just finished the book. <laughs> I don't even know where to begin with this ending. No one else died after the last person I talked about. The killer ended up being dude. Good for him, he was the killer. And his motive is this, Okay, so when he was like eight or nine or something, he had a viral video of him, go viral obviously, of him in the woods pretending to be a wizard, which he was filming himself and obviously it accidentally must have just ended up online and went viral. That was never explained. Like he filmed it himself of him playing as a wizard or something. Then it just went viral and he was known as Wizard Boy. He was having this whole confrontation with Plum because she was the one who found out that it was him. And then he tells her the whole reason that that's why he did it because he went viral for that 
thing. People make, made fun of him for that meme because it was like a meme they use as a gif and everything. And they just made fun of him. So then he just wanted to like kill every influencer because that was his way to get revenge for all those who mocked him. So basically if you ever used his meme or gif he was coming after you so... He just had to have a lot of people to hunt down. When they were having that scene, Plum was just like, I need to know everything. He tells her and then she was like, so you're a wizard boy? <laughs> and he's like, yes, and no one knows my real name. It's Sammy. <laughs> it was just so stupid. So everyone else that's alive is like locked in their house, in the house or whatever. She's outside with him and then she starts to run away because he's chasing her because he's going to kill her. And they get to this cliff and she, when she's running to this cliff, she passes by two goats, two billy goats. So yeah, he keeps running after her to get to the cliff. Then she starts screaming and stuff. And I think she must have been screaming to like attract the goats or something because then one of the goats comes running and the goat hits dude with like his, what are they called? Horns, whatever, hits him in the like butt with his horns and that makes dude fall off the cliff <laughs> so he got killed by a goat honestly the goats and the chicken absolute icons we have no choice but to stand the goat and the chicken like billy the goat henrietta the chicken an absolute power duo who is doing it like them absolutely no one so yeah that's what happens everyone else has left survived so we have Jalen, the podcaster guy, he survives. Jude, the guy, I still don't know what he does. I think he's just an Instagrammer. Then we have Cece, the makeup artist, YouTuber. She survives. We have Peach, which is Plum's older sister. Then obviously Plum, Marlo, and Sophia, her two friends and her all survive. That's what happens. And then they go to the beach because they're like hoping that some boat is going to come save them because they're still trapped on the island. And then a yacht shows up, which is a booze party. Like there's lots of people partying on this yacht. And it ends up being Peach's stalker. And that's how they get rescued is by her stalker. Because she put up on Instagram where she was. So her stalker came and rescued came to the festival and to stalk her and that's how she gets rescued and she ends up like kissing him and like falling in love with her stalker <laughs> and that's how they all get saved by the stalker named Edward oh my god Edward and the peach it's like Edward and the apple twilight memories all over again also Marlo and Plum end up kissing and then they're girlfriends so we love the female female romance representation love that but also we did get our well, is it a final girl? No, she was the final chicken. Henrietta survived and Sophia is going to keep her and like treat her like the queen chicken that she is and we absolutely love that for her. But what was this book? Like honestly, what was this book? I am happy that I finished it just because, you know, I'm behind my Goodreads challenge now. I'm one less book behind. But this was bad. I think this honestly might be one of the worst books I've ever read. And I have read after. Obviously would not recommend. But if you're looking to laugh. If you want to like you know stan a chicken and a goat. Check it out. Even though I kind of just told you everything that happens in it. So don't know if you really still want to read it yourself. So yeah I think I'm going to end the vlog here. Let me know your guys' thoughts on this book. And are we all chicken stands? Because I think we should be at this point. Once again, thank you so, so much to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. Be sure to click the link in my description to go check out Book of the Month and get your first book for $9.99 using the code GOMAY. And with Book of the Month, you can get good books unlike this one. And yeah, other than that, that's going to be it for this video. And I shall see you all next time in my next video. So goodbye, guys. Bye.